اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين Respected viewers السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته خطوة بلولونا Butula bumenani. Um, Insha'Allah. Welcome to MTN. My name is Rafiul Mlangeni and Angham Binge Dwa. I'm with um, our scholar, our very own fiqh specialist. Uh, he'll join us shortly, Murur Singh. Hussein in Shinyani and today's topic is the difference between theology and scholastic theology. Aqaid and Ilmul Kalam. I didn't even know there was a difference. I didn't even know there were two of these. Um, so while we wait for our Sheikh, um, Allama Tabatabai Ari. Or we say, if one does not, if one does a complete and rigorous search of the divine book, paying close attention to its verses, they will find more than 300 verses mm. invite mm. people to think, reflect, remember, and em employ their intellects or verses teaching the prophet arguments and methods of establishing a truth. One has God commanded his servants to accept God or anything from him mindlessly to believe in it without understanding or tread a path blindly. He Allah and it is true. Raibona, um, when it comes to theology, we are allowed to question even the existence of God. So if Allah as a command or follow um religion high mindlessly without understanding. So which means there's uh, more to it than meets the eye. Inshallah, um, our Sheikh will be telling us uh, more about this. Inshallah. So, Salaam Alaikum, Sheikh. Wa Alaikum Salaam wa Rahmatullahi Taala wa Barakatuh. I hope I'm not too late. If I am late. <laughs> right. Agudri? Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Salam alaikum, Maulan. Sorry? Ah, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm having, I can't hear. Uh, Salam alaikum. Wa alaykum salam Thank you. Um, for this auspicious program, inshallah, that we wish and foresee to uh, help us to help us as a community, inshallah, to learn and understand our religion uh, properly, inshallah. 
these conversations might be short and uh, they might be short, they might, but them being online, inshallah, hopefully they will help uh, our Muslim brothers and sisters uh, learn and know and understand their religion better, inshallah, and we are at their service. Yeah. I wanna, it's, it's relaxed, Mo. Uh, I'm not sure if you already have, but it's relaxed, Mo. I hope you encourage the viewers to be free with asking the questions. I wanna let I'm just wearing my golf t shirt, rocking my headphones. This is a relaxed setup, inshallah. <laughs> so, any question is more than welcome, any topic is more than welcome. I hope. Uh, you encourage the listeners, the viewers. Inshallah, uh, inshallah. So, um, I reckon I shall be looking up. Um, yeah, yeah, I didn't even know this. A good theology, key theology. Then myself, I didn't even know there was a difference, or there were the theology they too. I just knew aka idili aka id, you know. No, no theology and the scholastic theology. So, if you could just uh, briefly explain. Oh yes, yes, yes. Um, All right. So, yeah. um, uh, the topic, yeah, yeah, theology and uh, scholastic theology. Uh, I put it that way because we want to have our titles and our head in English, like okay? But it would have been better. Thank you very much, like Arabic. Uh, I hope my sound is clear. If you reveal Arabic, Riri, Aqaid, and Ilmul Kalam, then it would show that there's a difference. Um, so basically, Aqaid, in, in some books, Eric Thomas, so in some books, they don't distinguish between the two. They say the, say, the, the two are the same. So Aqaid, which in our title is just theology, and then Ilmuki, um, Ilmul uh, Kalam which is scholastic theology. They don't separate between the two. Bari uh, Aqa, it is Ilmul Kalam, and I'll explain why. And then uh, there are others that say, no, we, we separate from the two. So uh, just in brief, just to give a, a quick highlight, Kuri, Aqa, it is the beliefs that we have is the Islam. So these are the roots of Islam, Usuluddin, that's another name for them. Um, uh, we learn them, but aqaid, we get them from the teachings of the Qur'an, we get them from the arguments that are presented in the Qur'an, we get them from um, the words of the Holy Prophet and the words of the Imams, alayhimu salam. So, for example, قُلْ Allahu ahad, Say that Allah is one. That is aqaid, that is what we believe in, and we take it from the Qur'an, finish and start. Scholastic theology, however, Ilmul Kalam is um, more on it's more discussion based, like the word Kalam in Arabic means speaking. So, Ilmul Kalam is more discussion based. So, on the side here, Ilmul Kalam, this is where we want uh, to, this is where we. Um, we want to reach the conclusions that are that we are given by that we are that got to us via the Quran and the Holy Prophet and the teachings of the Ahlul Bayt salam. We want to reach those conclusions. Our rationalization, our akal, our intellect, our arguments. So that is the difference between the two. Uh, uh, if that is clear, inshallah. So Aqaid, just to briefly repeat and recap, is that Aqaid is the teachings that we get directly about our beliefs directly from the Quran, the Prophet, and Ahlul Bayt. And then 
kalam uh, when we want to reach the same conclusions but using our intellect and rationalization you see so that is the difference uh, between the two it's uh, as i said that some people say they they are the same and the reason for this the reason that they say that the two are the same is or that the two work uh, in tandem is um there's an argument that's presented by Ayatollah um, Mutahari uh, when he speaks about this. Ari, you only you only need al kalam to prove tawheed and nubuwa. You only need al kalam to prove uh, the existence of Allah uh, only, and then you and then also to prove the necessity for a prophet. But you do not need, according to him. You do not need beyond that. You do not need aqaid, uh, ilm al kalam, to prove, for example, imama, or to prove, for example, uh, the other furu'ad-din. That's another argument that's there that distinguishes between the two. So those who say that kalam, ilm al kalam, is aqaid, basically they are synonymous. Then Bonabarin Ilmul Kalam and Nakli and Ilmul Kalam al Al Akli. So Ilmul Kalam and Nakl, Nakl means to transmit. So they say, no, this is Ali that we get from the teachings of the Quran, the Prophet, and Ahlul Bayt. That's Ilmul Kalam by transmission. And then Ilmul Kalam al Akli is the other side where we use logic, philosophy, and so on and so forth. So, yeah. That's the difference or similarity between the two. Okay, so I can see if I said, I said a mouthful. Um, uh, it is um our our givens, ne? and then. Ilmul Kalam, he the wise and hows and ways seems. Uh, I, I uh, no break. I'm only please come again. I, 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 I didn't get that. Okay. No problem. Kiri, um. Simply put, aka idiki our given like so not the uh tawhid and whatnot and then him king ilmul kalam ki the wise house ways and the likes. Oh yes, Ijwab. yes, yes. That's a perfect way. To, that's a perfect way to put it actually, and to simplify it, Hori, uh, this is what we get from. For example, uh, Islam teaches us that we should believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's aqaid. But then, and then it, it gives us certain um, standpoints, things to stand upon, like ahad, as I mentioned, uh, Allah, la ilaha, illa. these are, this is marking tawheed. But then on the other side, this is where we want to prove khuri, Allah, this is where we want to prove um, Allah uh, is kind, Allah is all knowing, and so on and so forth. So, yes, that's a very beautiful way of putting it. Never thought about it. Wow, you are my teacher now. Subhanallah. <laughs> right, I really were clear, 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 clear. So, um, um, how say it's a pause? I it can them before ilmul kalam, right? Yes, Robert. so that's All that's one way you can. There must be. Yeah, be and that's also one way that that's question. also one way that you can that you can right. put it. I get it. Um, oh, sorry. No, go on. Yeah, that's Kira, That's one way of putting it. You learn it before ilmul kalam. Um, 
so yeah yeah i remember um, uh, our teacher going to go tanzania yo hey marmon to khala kele za islam since 2011 go tanzania subhanallah anyway <laughs> 11 years ago oh my god anyway anyway uh so that's one way of putting it that's one way that the other people uh, put it as well for it no aqaid are the the basic belief however ilm al kalam is a bit more advanced and ilm al kalam is a bit more deeper rational and whatnot so the danger that comes um the danger that comes inshallah will go to the history of this why there's a difference inshallah the danger that comes here of trying to do ilm al kalam without doing aqaid is that somebody may uh, get start to have some doubts in their mind, start to have some skepticism, start to have some misunderstandings in their beliefs in Islam. So, um, because the Ilm al-Kalam questions you. I remember the first time we started Ilm al-Kalam, they asked us, do you believe in God? We're like, yeah, yeah, we do. Uh, Sheikh Jawad Shumad, all those years ago. Um, he's like, do you believe in God? We're like, yeah. He's like, oh, okay. Then who is God? Imagine, first class ever. Who is God? Who is Allah? Okay, prove him to me. How do you know he exists? So without proper Allah, it, it's very difficult. You saying not believing in God. So it's a very beautiful way of putting it. Therefore, you learn Allah at first to put the foundation and then rationalize these beliefs that you have. It, it always um, works better that way. <laughs> So it was it was um intentional for Hudali Ilmul Kalam. Uh yes, yes. How no, I'm not almost <laughs> anyway. So it's uh it it developed, it developed, you know. Al Mul Kalam developed. How did Al Mul Kalam develop? It's Al Gashiba in the second century of um, the Hijra. This is where now one of the reasons that it developed is this: this is when the Muslim world was interacting a lot with people outside. So, for example, um, it was not only just Hijaz, the area between Mecca and Medina, but now they had stretched and got into Yemen. And then they were moving towards Persia as well, towards uh, modern day Iran, to uh, uh, passing by modern day Iraq, and so on and so forth. So there they were interacting with a lot of Jews, there were a lot of Christians, a lot of um, uh, Zoroastrians, a lot of Sabians, a lot of um, uh, Zanadeta. So um, are religious people. It's not a new. It's not, it's not a new phenomenon people who are not religious at all at the time. So, because of that, that's how this thing, Ya Al-Mul Kalam, came about. Therefore, okay, fine. If you speak to a Muslim and you want to treat and you want to uh, convince them of the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can just quote one hadith, one verse from the Quran. They'll basically be forced to believe that because that is their, that is their belief. These are things that they hold on to. But if you are going to argue now uh, with a Christian, for example, you're going to discuss the oneness of God, Tawheed, monotheism. Um, then you cannot use the Quran, you cannot use the Hadith as, an, as your argument. What do you need now? You need rational uh, discussions. You need um, to have a deeper conversation with them. That's not just based on Quran and Hadith, you see. So that's one of the reasons why Ilm al-Kalam uh, develop. Yeah, and Afwan. Yes. That's that's um one thing that we face. Um. How oh. Okay. We are having some technical issues. Uh, 
اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل خرجه She's back. Allahumma hey. salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Afwan, Afwan, in things I mean, things I mean. Technical yeah, and physical things are left and right. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, you were saying yeah, before um, we were so abruptly. Yeah, Khori, this is the one uh, challenge we face, you know? Yaw mm agyua. -hmm. I'm a non-Muslim, um, especially I keep on talking about some religions, but uh, those who are not churchgoers, when they want you to prove your argument, I have to go back to the Lord. Tabata ko Qurani mo jo ita na kira ako ko luko Qurani. So first something, first something is for a kang. I think it will be because in jail gal, you know. So yeah. It, it really helps. It really helps. Um, yeah, yeah. This, this, you know? Oh, yeah. Your Honorable Speaker. <laughs> the Honorable Co-host. Co mm. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, so so that's the thing with, uh, with Kalam. That's how it developed. You see, um, the naming of it differs. The naming, the reasons for naming it differ. Why? There's, you're going to be surprised. Uh, from the top of my head, there are three reasons why it was named like that. One, one reason was because um, Kalam, I get his speech. So because the scholars used to discuss a lot. So they called it al Mul Kalam. So you basically, the skill, the, the the, the science of speaking, the science of uttering, the science of delivering, that's what it was. And also because those scholars, every time, whenever they would discuss, for example, to read, they would start their statements with saying, Al-Kalam fi, so and so on and so forth. So the the saying in terms of one, two, three, then it became the ilm kalam. That's one reason. The second reason why it's um, uh, ilm kalam um, why it's called Al Mul Kalam is because uh, let me let me think. <laughs> why am I remembering two? The second one uh, I said three. Now I'm remembering two. I want to be like. <laughs> so the the other reason that it's Al Mul Kalam is that because it was pertaining to what. Um, the name, the book of Allah does not say. Yes, yeah, that's the second reason. So, for example, Allah in the Holy Quran says, Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Say that Allah, He is one. They say He is Allah, the one. Allah samad. The eternal Allah is uh, eternal. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. Um, he never begets, nor was He begotten. Uh, and no one is at par with him or equal with him. Okay, but Yanum, as you said, somebody who does not believe in the Quran, does not believe in the Prophet at the time, how then do you uh, discuss this matter with them? You see? So it was called, it was called Ilmul Kalam. It was called Ilmul Kalam because it it starts where the 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 I the Quran is called Kalamullah, the speech of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So Bariona, it starts where the Kalamullah stops. It starts where the words of Allah stop. So that's the second reason it was called 
Al-Mulkaram. The third reason, and this is, (laughs) this is, it's today, 1400 and 1400 years later, 1400 years later, we find it as a proposal that we laugh at it. But there are people who were were killed because of this. Um, It's because the discussion, the main discussion started with Hassan al-Basri and all these other guys. It started, it started because um, the discussion was like, Quran. Listen, I'm sure you're even going to laugh when I ask this question. Quran, is it, was it created when the Prophet came or was it always there? with Allah and then it became a whole discussion two groups became and then people started killing each other because they wanted to discuss this thing is the Quran pre pre creation or was it also created it is is it old or is it new did it come with the prophet or was it always in local mahfud the the tablets of the heavenly tablets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you see so then the discussion came and then people started talking about that and then the science was born however um these okay the, the naming doesn't really matter doesn't really matter but because the thing is as you so uh, nicely put it in your introduction that the Quran is the main thing that tells us people, that tells us to ponder. You see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, will tell you um, one of my favorite verses. It says, Sanurihim ayatuna. Sanurihim ayatuna. Hatta yatabayana lahum annahum haqq. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we will show them our signs in the horizons and in themselves until it becomes clear to them that he is al-haq, he is the truth. You see. So now the, the problem comes here is that okay, fine, we see the heavens, the skies, and whatnot. Do they not look at the camel, how it was created? You see, in many places in the Holy Quran, it prompts us to use our intellect to try and understand these things. You see, so the Quran is actually the basis of the science. It's not that it developed 200 years later and then we have to give Hassan al-Basri or whoever it is the credit for this. No, uh, I'm, uh, I'm not sure if you, um, you were there, but I, I recently gave a lecture in Soweto country titled Everything We Know is Revelation. One of the examples I use is the book uh, um, of Al-Mufaddal, Tawheed Al-Mufaddal. So in that book, he, he gives the anatomy of the eye, the anatomy of the brain, the anatomy of so the reason why a human being is the only animal that walks upright with two legs and so on and so forth. It's a book on Tawheed because it's called Tawheed Al-Mufaddal. But it is scientific in that aspect. Of this is. So this discussion of how it, it has always been there, it's just that maybe uh, some people wanted credit and then it developed as a science on its own. You see, and that also that can be understood and justified on why that it became a science of its own. Because um, it has to obviously it will always it will always interlink. For example, philosophy. I could they discuss these uh, ex, ex, working. This word I struggle to pronounce. Existen- it answers the existential questions about the origin of things, the cause and effect of things. So philosophy, in that way, in a way, it will overlap with with kalam with aqaid. They will overlap because kalam will tell us that no, the origin is Allah. Philosophy wants to discuss where the origin is from. You see? So they will interlink somewhere somehow. They, you see. Yeah, I've said a mouthful. <laughs> Try. Hey, what's up? 
kids. I'm so passionate. number two, we say um somebody. Uh, it starts where Allah's words stop. Literally, mm -hmm. Allah's words it is stop again. Like, what do you mean? What does that mean? Okay, uh, then excuse my diction, excuse the way I put it. But what that means is it explains, it explains the words of Allah, um, but not oh. using the words of the Prophet. Yes, it explains the words of Allah, but not using the words of the Prophet, not using the words of the Imam. So we cannot find that answer. We cannot find that answer from the words of the Prophet or from the Quran itself or from the words of Ahlul So therefore, we use a rationalization. And then if it is in line with the Quran, in line with the teachings of the Prophet, in line with the teachings of Ahlul Bayt, then we, we reach the same conclusion, then we take it. Yeah. All right. I really bore. clear. Alhamdulillah. And then, <laughs> was it always there or was it created? I get it. I get it. Like, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. I The book, Erivalang, our book, yeah, yeah, the Quran, he, eh, it represents the Quran. It is not it, right? I think you've heard this before, or you know this. So, mm. um, was it always there? Meaning the actual Quran there, because Allah has always been there, and these are His words. Does it mean that Hori? It was like Habibuz, or was it always there? Do they mean? Was it always there because Allah sent thing, or was it created Allah nalite nanzali thing and then abai yeza this thing? Yes, so, so, yeah, you really you'll struggle to even put the the question in words because it's a very confusing dis confusing discussion. I'm not gonna give the answer for it. Um, because that needs a discussion on its own. But basically, the basis of the question that they raise from both sides, from both sides, those who say that, no, it has always been there, and those who say that, no, it was created for us. The, it's because our Sheba Quran, both of them have their stances, and that's why they felt it's justified to even kill each other. Right? But... For example, to, to add to your question, I agree, uh, Barry, uh, the Quran every year would be revealed to the heart of the Prophet. The whole thing would be revealed to the heart of the Prophet on Laylatul Qadr. I hear that's why Inna Anzalnahu fi Laylatul Qadr. And then, uh, but then uh, uh, on that year, on that day, the 27th of Rajab started the gradual revelation of this is whereby an incident would happen and then the prophet would answer it the incident would happen and, and then the prophet would answer it based on the revelation from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so i'm not answering the question i'm adding to the confusion <laughs> unfortunately so that's where the whole discussion comes from. Hore, okay, what does this mean? The whole thing was revealed to the Prophet. And what's disappointing about about all of that is that these wars and these discussions that were had, they were had at the time of there was an imam present. You see, that's what's disappointing. There was an imam present from Ahlul Bayt Salam. For example, Akirbari Ilmul Kalam started in the second century after the Hijrah. That was the time when Imam, first of all, Imam Muhammad al Baqir, the founder of the Islamic University. That's what that's one of his titles. That's why it's called Al Baqir. Imam Al Baqir alayhi salam, he was at he was living at that time. Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq, alayhi salam, the one who had at one point 4,000 students 
and then Imam Al Kazim alayhi salam. You see, it was during their time where these things started. Because the um the fact is during the it barking, they call it the golden age of Islam and so on and so forth. This is when that time started. So when all these killing these different ideas or ideologies, they interacted with Islam, they created doubts and misunderstandings in the heart of people. So these things are about to end up killing each other because of aqaid differences. It's disappointing because there was an infallible imam from Ahlul Bayt. That's what's very disturbing about all of it. You see. But what can you say? It happened, it happened. Imagine that was a whole discussion. Or was the Quran created or was it always there? And then, um, for example, one argument that they have is that uh, Akir Baba Mbar, no, it was revealed to the heart of the Prophet. Uh, Baba Mbar, then they come with the argument, uh, we say that the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one from Adam up until Muhammad. So, does this mean that the Quran has always been one, just being edited for different people? Whole big discussion, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Which I no, won't go on. I'm, I was agreeing yeah, that that Yataka um Robert hey. Baba. Especially Agiri Arpella Barra um every prophet was Muslim or we are all born mm. Muslims, you know. Mm. Yeah. So us yeah, being all born Muslims, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, it's a big discussion. Yeah. That's why I can, if you want to have that discussion, it should be a discussion on its own. That's why I have to find a conclusive answer now, because it's a follow-up question, follow-up question, follow-up question, you understand? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Nah, I learned a lot. I'm not gonna lie. For starters, I didn't even know this. I didn't even know this. And then, yeah, poof, you know? Kosha yeah, and yeah. nothingness. Alhamdulillah, yeah, Rale. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you see, the thing is, now now it comes it comes to this thing, yeah, for it, um, especially in that introduction of Ayatollah uh, Muttahari, the introduction to Al Mul Kalam. They mentioned the different schools of Kalam as well. There's the Ja'afari school, There's the Ja'afari school, which is rooted from the Imam Ja'afari Kalam. And then there's the, there's the Qadiriya. You see, this is also one discussion that they were having there about predestination and then uh, the opposite. You see, so Qada and Qadr. And then there was also a discussion here. Jabr and Tafwid or Ikhtiar. So Jabr means that no, we are compelled to do everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala basically has a joystick connected to all of us and then he's controlling all of us. That is Jabr. Tafwid is uh, the opposite of that. Tafwid is that no, he left us to do everything we want. You see. So then, totally discussion here, yeah, justice. This is now big kalam issues. Your yeah, justice for no Allah. Um, if he wants, he can put Pharaoh, Pharaoh in paradise and put Moses, Musa in hell because he can do whatever he wants. These are big discussions <laughs> that happened in that time. You see, and then comes the discussion also Yaqaba and other Yaqore. No, there's predestination. I am Hussein Shiani today at this age, um, living where I am because it was predestined many years ago. Then there's the opposite, yeah. No, um, I, I worked to get where I am. Big discussion. So then comes the Ahlul Bayt, the Ja'afari, 
Arengi, La Jabr, Wala Tafui. It's not that we are forced to do everything, nor are we left to do anything we want. But Al Amru Bain Al Amri, the matter is between the two. They ask him of Jafar, look at the logical explanation for this. Ya Khuri, we are not forced, nor are we left to do anything. Imam Jafar said, but what do you mean? Walk, your walking on earth, on the earth, is not like you're falling on it. I get your walking is your choice. You push yourself. But if you trip, you cannot now, mid falling, try to push yourself up like you are Michael Jackson in Thriller. <laughs> you know, no, you're going to fall. You understand? Mm. So he gave a good understanding uh, explanation I went on to, yeah, Jabur, what have we? That's the Ja'far side. Then there's the Mu'tazila, then there's the Ashaira, previously known as the Qadiriya and the uh, uh, Tafwidiya. Big dis- just uh, big, long discussions, JFL. But yeah. This is the main thing now. The main thing, Yaqur is difference in the Aqa'id as well is because of, number one, as I said, foreigners were coming to the Muslim land, so they had to get answers because of the skepticism and stuff. Um, number two is that now people are not relying in Twitter. People are not relying on the, uh, the revelation meaning the Qur'an, or the imam of the time who was, uh, according to Hadith Thaqalain, the partner of the Qur'an. You see, now they want to come with their own ideas. See, this is uh, something, if you read in Tawheed al-Fabbal, the intro fella, the reason why the book was written, then you see, it's been, it's been there, it's been there, it's not new. Atheism, agnosticism, now we have these words, we have these names, but they've always been there. Yeah, shukran, shukran. When the thoughts are on the Twaran, the divine come, the Twaran, Ray Buddha. Alhamdulillah, Ralebuha, Ralebuha. Mm-hmm. There are no questions from the viewers. Ivan Free, Ivan Free, Ivan Free, Ivan Free, Libute, Maulana, who are available for Makao Fela, inshallah. Um, Kyo, the important person. Alhamdulillah. Right, so Hanse the viewer di nahan. Um last week in the final question I can see um Akai was a handle or a go for hand. The question the question was uh Kyahuza Kyahuza Mm, the question was um based on fasting, Hori. Since there's um kafa for breaking a fast, ne? is there kafara yes, for breaking a qadha fast, a wajib qadha fast, or even a mustahab qadha fast? If that's a thing. Mm-hmm. Is there kafara for that? If eating, it's a mayajwa. Because I get it, we know breaking fast um intentionally kafaraya thinking compensation key sixty days so yes, fasting sixty days uh, freeing a slave yeah. or feeding sixty people mm. okay so, so yeah uh, so yes 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 the question was, is the kafara for breaking a qadha fast? Uh-huh. So let's say uh, it happens that somebody misses a day in the month of Ramadan and then they or break their fast in the month of Ramadan or misses a day. They miss a day. Let's say they miss a day in the month of Ramadan. And then after the month of Ramadan, they try to repay the, the fasting and then they break that fast. 
they do something that contravenes the fast, such as uh, eating, drinking, eating, drinking, or anything haram that breaks the fast, then uh, they'll have broken that fast. Now they have to do qaza, they still have to do the qaza, but then there's also a kafara. Yes, there is a kafara. The kafara of that is fasting three days. You see, so in addition to the day that he owes from the month of Ramadan, he will have to fast three days as a penalty. All right, all right, there. So let's say, um, you call it a, like, two days, ne? and then on the first day. Uh, so should I after that or do I continue to replace it two days and then get the kafaraya that other eki breaking? Yes, yes, yes. When it comes to fasting, Qadha is given priority always. Qadha is always, okay. always given priority. So yeah. Then the you do the kafara. All right. Yeah. 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 So um before Kuala um Kupa Shem Ari Kwale Katapel or before that um um re like to for it um viewers you are allowed to to suggest a topic you want discussed and you can um, ask questions even after the show, they will be answered, the Kodi commenting or privately, inshallah. So you can suggest from today, you can start suggesting any topic you want discussed, inshallah. Shukran, Sheikh, for this very informative. Uh, Remove that difficulty to cure that ill and to grant us ease, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, not to take us from this world except that He is pleased with us, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to always uh, inspire us to want to learn more about the religion of Islam, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on the deceased and to cure the ill and to return those who are lost from their families to their families inshallah we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send to them the reward of surah al-fatiha before it salat ala muhammad wa ala Thank you very much to Sister Rebile and to the viewers uh, who are engaging us and watching. Inshallah, thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah.
Ah, it's um, where is it from us? Ah, <sighs> MTN. Mm -hmm. Very informative. Shukran Gela. So uh, we take from the tree, learn from the tree, and develop from the tree. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Next week, same time, inshallah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad. Wa ajjim wa rajam.